Well, greetings, friends and followers. This is Nurses Talking, and I am Dale Barzi. As always, if you like what you see and hear, subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. Here on Nurses Talking, we speak to nurses anywhere in the world and at any stage in their nursing journey, from students to retirees and anywhere in between. Today, it is my great pleasure to welcome Karen Brewer. Karen is a postpartum nurse who left the bedside to focus on her own business, revolving around teaching postpartum care. She's the author of the B-A-B-Y book, and that's Best Advice for Baby and You Parents, the second edition, and is currently working hard to get her book marketed for OBGYN offices in every state, starting with her own state of Missouri. Her mission is to get her postpartum book into as many hands as possible so it can help relieve the fear and anxiety after delivery for parents during their hospitalization. This will include getting the book translated into Spanish to start and work her way through other languages that are spoken in the US. Soon she will be publishing her nurse's first, her nurse's first edition to provide information and guidance in postpartum care. Hoping to get this book as part of nursing schools, maternal and child health curriculum, or available in colleges and university bookstores. She's also studying to become a CE provider for new postpartum nurses so she can help educate new nurses coming into the field or seasoned nurses looking for a change. Karen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that. It is my great pleasure. It is my great pleasure. I, you know, typically I start by asking people why they become nurses. I think today I have to start with your big vision. You have a huge vision. You want your book in every single nursing classroom. You want it in OBGYN's offices. You want it in parents' hands. You want it in so many languages. That's a huge, huge vision. <laughs> well, I think probably a lot of the vision came from those years of working in postpartum and um, I precepted nurses that came onto the unit. Um, I also um, did the new nurses, you know, in, in nursing school um, when they would have their, um, I can't even think of the word right now, but they would come in and we would, we would intern yeah. basically, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. And uh, so I love that teaching aspect of it, always have, and especially love teaching with the parents, um, showing them new things, giving them little hints, and they're like, oh my gosh, nobody ever told me that, you know, it's just those moments that I realize that, you know, I really feel like I'm good at doing this, and yeah. When, um, before I actually left the bedside, I had written the first edition, um, in 2018. Um, and shortly thereafter, I ended up leaving the unit because we had a big old upheaval with our OBGYNs and with me doing postpartum, I became kind of obsolete. I was mm. not a, you know, labor nurse. I wasn't a level two nurse. So I, my services weren't utilized anymore mm -hmm. uh, until they built a practice back up um so i just kind of worked my way through different things uh, nursing supervisor in the hospital um i tried doing level two that didn't seem to be uh, my cup of tea and then yeah. i just decided you know what i never marketed the book the first time around of course i got crickets <laughs> <laughs> um, so I figured this might be the time for me to do that. So I've been focusing all my efforts into getting that book published, which is now out there, of course, and, uh, working on the nurses edition, which will be out here soon and just marketing the heck out of it, uh, to try to get it in as many hands as possible. And with the patient that I took care of, um, I had a lot of different languages, a lot of different patients. And I really, even though we had a language line, it was like, I still felt kind of closed yeah. off because I couldn't just have yeah. a dialogue with them. Mm -hmm. And so my thought, my vision was to make this into 
a readable book for the multiple different languages we have here in the United States, just so those patients don't get left out. Yeah. And they're the most vulnerable population, really, because they mm-hmm. don't understand what's happening to them. It's just mm-hmm. like us, you know, you and I are going to another country yeah. and we don't speak yeah. the language yeah. and we don't know what's going on with us, you know, yeah. they're just doing yeah. things. So it's it's just that kind of that thought process uh, whenever I was taking care of them, that, that that's what I wanted to do. So I just kind of moved forward from there and I've been working on the marketing here for the last uh, couple months now. And doing quite what is it? Because, because, let's do, do the drum roll. <laughs> Two-time award-winning author, drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, actually, I just found out this week on that one. So congratulations, congratulations. Yeah, um, and the, the thing that's really special about this award here, it's, uh, it's the Goody Business Book Award. And that basically is... Uh, books that are within the business realm so um, they had several different categories the category that I was in was health and so I also I got two awards one for health in uh, general and then the one in postpart or for uh, parents and and uh, you know for parenting and I can't remember the, the other but anyway <laughs> It's still kind of still sinking I, in here. I can imagine. I can imagine. That's that's so really cool. That's really really cool. So congrats again. Well, oh, thank you. But you, so 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 now, what what brought you into nursing? What inspired you? Um, I think probably two things. Um, when I was delivering my first kid um i think that's probably whenever it really kind of, kind of sunk in that you know this might be something i would really like to do um i think i had wanted to get into medicine in some capacity when i was younger and then when i hit high school i started taking accounting classes and things like that it was like oh this is kind of cool i like this so that's what i thought my focus was going to be so when i went to college i started as an accounting major, changed over to business major, and that was just a big old flop. You know, I got into it for about two and a half years, and it just was not working out for me. So I quit. I got married, had had my two oldest children, and then once the kids started getting older, and I got to thinking, it's like, you know what? If something were to happen to my husband or we were to get divorced or whatever, how am I going to support these kids? I was working in a you know county office for the state of Missouri and wasn't making a whole lot of money. Yeah. So I got to thinking about it. And it's like, you know what? I had thought about this education at one point in time. Why don't I go back to school? So I did. And I have not looked back. I am so happy that I did this. I was 32 whenever I finished school. And so a little light bloomer, but you know what? Hey, it's it's been a wonderful ride the whole time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with late, late bloomers. I, I, I love to say that, you know, not all flowers bloom in spring. Some of mm-hmm. them in summer, some in autumn, and some in the winter. So there you go. <laughs> But coming to it, though, as um, as a second career and as um, as an as a typically um, older person entering the profession at that stage, mm-hmm. what were the challenges for you? Um, I think probably the biggest challenge that I had going into it was as as an as a worker in the state, we you know, you did your own job. You know, you had your desk, you did your own job, you didn't help anybody else because you just focused on what you needed to do. That was probably my biggest problem when I first started out is getting in there and helping other nurses because I was just focused on what I needed to do. And well, I got dinged on that quite a bit at the beginning, but I'm one of those learners that I have to do things over and over and over again before I kind of get into like a routine. Yeah. And I started, you know, 
helping other nurses and everything. And by the time that I got done, I was jumping in there. It's like, you know what? I could put this off. Let's go help this. This needs to be done, you know? Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's the biggest challenge. I think I had going in on that. Okay. 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 And so you kind of segued into, to sexual assault. I did. And the story behind that is um, the lady that I worked uh, and working with is the mother of my son's ex fiance. <laughs> but she and I have always stayed friends even after they broke up. And, I, you know, we're still, I still yeah. talk to her daughter and things too. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though my son is with somebody else now and they're actually planning on getting married. Um, but she still just kept hounding me. She goes, you know, you work in postpartum. That's perfect. That's the type of person I need for that empathy, for that, you know, for yeah. that type of, of work, because we've got a vulnerable population here. And so she kept pestering me and eventually I caved in on it. And actually, I'm really glad I did because I found that I do tend to have a really good rapport with these patients. Um, I've had so many of them, even from, you know, the lowliest, um, darkest places that they came from, thank me for taking my time and listening to their stories and believing in them. And yeah, that is probably a, a big thing that's so hard for a lot of them to even want to come forward because they're afraid there's going to be a stigma there or they exactly. going to believe them mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. they're going to question what they've, you know, has said. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, it's really, really difficult. And, you know, after a time, you know, we had some people that were kind of, uh, what we would call uh, repeat customers that would, you know, mm -hmm. cry, basically cry rape or we would think they would. And we got to delving into it a little bit more and found out that they were kind of like in a sex ring kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, yeah. you know, giving up sex for money or for you know, drugs yeah. or for whatever. And yeah. Then some of them were just taken Which, advantage yeah. of whenever they yeah. didn't want to, you know, yeah. and that's where the the hard and the hard part was really is just to, yeah. to find things like that. And um yeah, yeah, we just yeah. recently found out about that about a couple of them that we had. So yeah. you yeah. just never know the, the yeah. people that you meet, but yeah. And that's really, really hard for them because just because you do something voluntarily one time or two times or three or 10 times mm -hmm. does not mean that, you know, um, when you don't want to, you have to be forced to. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing. No means no. And it doesn't matter if you've, like you said, done it exactly. multiple times. If you are just not into it then and you say no, that's rape if they do it. That's, that's, yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. What would you like to see change in nursing? Oh, definitely. Everything, Everything that we've is. had a problem with lately. I mean, you know, the staffing issues, that was an issue back whenever I was a housing supervisor right during COVID. And that was rough. Um, and people were getting burnout then. Um, with the nursing shortages and everything until the C-suite starts, you know, getting their heads out of their, you know, where, um, and focusing on the nurses as a major part of medical necessity, yeah. they're yeah. going to, I mean, the hospitals are imploding right and left, it seems like, and, you know, nurses are striking all over the place. Yeah. You know, we don't get paid like the physicians do nope. or the PT or lab or any of those. We're like we're put in with the total cost the furniture. of the care, no matter what <laughs> care we give. Yeah. And we're not getting compensated for it. I mean, you know, we yeah. are a big part of that and we handle so much more than and with the patient so much more than the physicians are. 
and you know find things that are wrong with patients or notice things yeah. and you know if it wasn't for us these patients wouldn't be making it you know um so it's it that needs to change i mean nurses need to be compensated in some way or another either yeah. the hospital pays better and compensates them um you know, better mental health services for those that are burning out because that yeah. is a big thing right now too. Yeah. Uh, let, you know, the nurses are leaving in droves and it's making it even more uh, difficult for the ones that are still there that have to be there, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah. It, it needs to change. It really does. And until things do change, it's, you know, not going to get better at all. We... I, I, I see the day, I look forward to the day, Karen, where when nurses take over those C-suites. And... <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the funny thing is, is sometimes nurses do take over those C-suites and sometimes. they just, they just, sometimes. you know, they're now C-suite. Now all of a sudden they forget about them being nurses and what the struggles and everything were. And, you know, we don't have the equipment for this or whatever. And you know, that, that was a big thing that, you know, I really, really didn't like about it. Um, they, they they just need to, they need to fix it. <laughs> all there is to it, they just need to fix We're it. Fix. We're gonna fix. Mm. So what do you see, speaking of, you know, we're talking about all of this angst and, and people leaving and burning out and stuff like that. What do you think is going to look like in about 10 years or so? Or what would you like to see it look like? Ah, uh, well, I think probably that's kind of hard to, to to determine. I think with everything that's going on now, I think in 10 years, something will have come about. We've got so many nursing advocates out there right now you know, getting in with legislation and mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. to their, you know, state representatives and, you know, trying to get things better for the nursing sector. And so I honestly think even in 10 years, things will start looking up. I think they will be on the uphill swing um, mm -hmm. because they can't continue to keep doing like what they're doing. Because if they do, it's going to implode, and then where are yeah. where is our healthcare going to be then? Yeah, and it's not just here in the United States. I've heard no. that it's mm -hmm. you, know, <laughs> you know it's throughout the world, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. I tend to I tend to uh, agree with you that um, in another decade or so, I we will we will have a totally different view. Um, it may not be perfect. I don't think it any it will be anywhere near perfect, but. Um, what we're looking at would look different than what we're seeing right now. Right. Right. I do. I think so. Yeah. So given that, given that, what, what advice do you think you'll give to somebody who wants to be an, or who's thinking about um, becoming an S? Uh, you know, I honestly think that nursing is still a noble profession. I think things are going to work out with this. Um, you know, the nurses are taking a stand on it. And because of that, it's going to be, I think it's going to be fixed over time. Um, once they, they start, you know, compensating the nurses in some other way, making staffing better, you know, you got to get people to hire into the staffing in order to make it better. <laughs> so they're going to have to make some some type of incentive to bring those people in to make it better but i think even with it being difficult right now it's the patients still need us they need you us know, yes that's the big thing yes. right there the patients still need us and and we needed to 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 help focus and and take care of them because they're yeah. the ones that are suffering the most on this yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm still all for it. You know, it's a, like I said, it's a great profession it, and it will, it will change. It will change. It will change. It will change. It's probably going through, 
It seems like it's late to say that it's going through a birthing process, but it's going to some kind of birthing process. Yes. Yes, it's <laughs> it's going it, to, you know, I kind of look at it as a phoenix. You know, mm -hmm. the phoenix rises from the ashes. Yeah. I That's exactly kind of how I envision it is is that yeah. way and so i think it's going to have to come down to it just kind of crumbling and then it's going to have to build itself back up again so. up again we were talking we mentioned about burnout and and all of this and and mental health we talk about you know all of those um things oh, that yes. are not there but one of the things that i think we as we're talking about burnout um is that we have not traditionally focused on taking care of ourselves yeah not by education not by you know you know community support nothing right nothing. um and so i know that people are beginning to talk about it more but what does it mean to you well it's especially means to me i, I kind of look at it this way um whenever i took care of my postpartum patients my moms i would say to them you have to take care of yourself in order to be able to take care of your baby. Mm -hmm. And it's still the same thought process. We as nurses have to take care of ourselves in order to be able to give to our patients. If we're burnt out, we don't have anything left to give and they're going to suffer for it. So I think that we have to focus on our mental health. We have to focus on ourselves and taking our time, you know, time off and, you know, vacations and things like that to yeah. try to recharge ourselves yeah. to be uh, available for our patients whenever we are recharged. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's a, that's a big thing. We do, we have to take care of ourselves to be able to take care of the patients. It's a huge thing. It's a huge it thing. Um, you know, because uh, we don't, we don't, we just think that we, we need to give. And this is by, you know, I guess by our own nature and nurture and also by, by education and also by the, um, no, not the, the, not the community, the environment, the presented environment in which we work, because, you know, uh, we, we, we're like, well, I, I would like a week off, you know, mm -hmm. but, you you can't have the week off because this is going to be too short and that's going to, and then you're made to feel guilty that you actually wanted a week out of the time that you earned, yes. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. and really that's one of the reasons I really would like to see a stop um, just guilting people into working. Yeah. And it, it is, it's rough. And I understand from the, you know, yeah. management position, you know, your hands are tied too because you've got to rearrange mm -hmm. everything just to mm -hmm. go around them. But they need to have that time off. Yes. They've earned it, you know, and they've got to be able to do that and yeah. to, to continue to guilt the nurses into it. It's like, you know what, you can get, you know, either get some, uh, you know, yeah. temp agency there nurses to fill those positions there's a lot of them out there yeah. or yeah. you know you know see if somebody else that's that's wanting to pick up some extra hours will cover those shifts for them yeah. you know something yeah. find a way find a way because a you way. know <laughs> find a way because you you would never um not pay somebody pay a nurse what she earned right. she would get her paycheck but she earned the day too <laughs> right <laughs> Ah, Karen, lastly, but not leastly, what would you say if you had to describe for me in, in one word, the most essential quality of a nurse, what would that word be? Um, my, my word probably would be integrity. Okay, good. One. Um, and the reason why I chose this is as nurses, we have to be honest. We have to have strong moral pr principles. We have to be ethically and morally doing the right thing for our patients, even behind closed doors. Yeah. Um, yeah. That means all aspects of nursing with the physicians, with, you know, ancillary staff, with leadership, and most especially with our patients. Yeah. We have yeah. to have that honesty. Um, if you can't be honest, you can't own up to your own mistakes. 
and you think you know everything, which you don't, um, <laughs> then this, I would say this isn't a profession for you. Um, yeah. This keeps the yeah. trust, trust factor up uh, with yeah. everyone. And that keeps nurses as the number one trusted profession. Trusted. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you, you said you said you mentioned, you know, even you said even behind closed doors. Yes. Uh that that's huge because a lot of what we do for our patients is behind closed doors. Exactly. So yes, absolutely, especially behind closed doors. Um, they've got to be able to trust you. Yes. Karen, thank you so much for this conversation. It has been an absolute pleasure. It has been. Thank you so much, Dale. I so appreciate this and um, good luck on, you know, other interviews for your future. Thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.